Good morning, Grace Church. Good morning, Grace Church. I am, I am loving the energy this morning. Thanks to everybody who was able to join us in person. We have a very special, unique Sunday for you today. This is going to be very different than how we normally do things. I hope you are ready. We will later on, towards the end of our time together, even be celebrating a baptism, which is one, for, for me, it's one of the greatest joys I have doing what it is that I do. And if you don't know that, I'm Pastor Brad, so if we haven't met, uh, I, I, I'm glad that you're here. I would love to, to shake your hand, get to know you a little bit. But we're going to begin this morning in just a, a few moments. We're going to be uh, doing a lot more. You're going to, we're going to be asking you to stand. We're going to be asking you to sing. We're going to ask you to participate in some things. So I ask for you to um, kind of uh, have that, that open eye perspective towards that. But before we do that, uh, I want to remind you today when we're all done with the kind of service gathering time, we are going to have our discovery track. This is something we do each week. It's different each week. We kind of have a rotation of five of them. And this week it's on partnership, becoming an official partner or official member here at Grace Church. If you haven't done that, if you want to find out more, I'd be happy to sit down with you. It's about a 20-ish minute or so video and discussion there. But then also want to make sure that you're aware that we are going to be hosting a magical back-to-school bash for kids on the 18th of August. It's going to be at 6.30. I um, believe there's going to be some kind of snacky food involved, but uh, uh, Andrew, uh, if you know Andrew in the back, if, Andrew, can you wave? There we go, that's Andrew. He, he does some, some magic show, balloon animal type stuff. He has that, and he's got a couple of his friends who are going to come in and help put on a, um, a fun end of summer activity for our kids, and everyone will be welcome to join in on that. Now, before we, before we continue on to the rest of our stuff, where we are hopefully going to have some energy and, and getting you guys moving, um, I'm going to pray for us. But before we do that, uh, I want to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to ask a friend of mine to join me on the stage, and that is Anastasia. Will you come up here? A lot of you probably have met her, a lot of you might not know Anastasia, but she has been connected to our church for quite some time, and she is one of our more virtual members, because right now you live where? New Jersey. New Jersey. So the morning commute is hard here on Sunday, so she connects in that way. She's been connecting to the life group that meets at our church, and you're doing something that's going to kind of throw your life into a tizzy here for a little bit. What are you doing? Moving to Germany. If you didn't hear that, moving to Germany. She is with the Space Force. So if you've been following the news, you know that that's more important than ever, right? With all the aliens out there. So, um, but I wanted to, uh, pr as a church family, because this is going to be a big move for her and her husband, um, Brian. And uh, we just want to pray for them, kind of commission them off and do that as we start our service. So please join with me in prayer. Father, thank you for how you love us. Thank you for the opportunity to be together as your family in different places and different times. And we thank you that we get to worship you this morning. May you be pleased by that worship. May we be encouraged by it. And God, we pray for Anastasia. We pray for Brian. We pray for their move, that it goes smoothly, and that you use them in mighty ways across the pond uh, to further your kingdom, to bless people's lives. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Lord, let the light of your love be shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us, set us free by the truth you now bring us. Fill this land with the Father's glory, place, spirit, place. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let From the shadows into your radiance By the blood I may enter your brightness Search me, try me, consume all my darkness Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Fill this land with the Father's glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. So our faces display your likeness Ever changing from glory to glory Mirrored here, may our life sell your story Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine Fill this land with the Father Glory, place, spirit, place, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. My name is Norma Ank. Uh, I would like to share a Bible verse with you. James 1, 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself by being polluted by the world. I've been a widow for five and a half years and God has provided me with many people in my life that have looked after me. My neighbors, my family, and my church have been a big part of that. For example, in 2019, I had an aortic valve replacement. Many people in my life stepped up to make sure I was taken care of, especially my granddaughter, Maya. And uh, she did this until she went back to school at Grace College in Indiana in the fall. Later that year, I had chemo and radiation for cancer treatments. Many people within this church made sure I made it to my treatments by transporting me. This includes Diana Miller, Janice Burkholder, Harold and Pat Weaver, Kathy Duffy, Kathy even uh, solicited a family friend to make sure there were enough people to take me to my treatments. <clears throat> While I was recuperating uh, from my cancer treatment, 
I was given the opportunity to travel to Florida by a good friend who also happens to be a niece of Gloria Nauman. Uh, she allowed another friend of mine uh, to come with me to visit her and her family uh, for a week to help with my recovery. In May of 2022, I had a stroke, which happened to be the day before my granddaughter Maya and her husband Elliot's first anniversary. So by the time I got home from the hospital, they were here from Indianapolis and they had brought their cat and their dog. And they spent the summer taking care of me. Thankfully, they never left. I could share more experiences of times that God has shown up through people in my life. So if I forgot you, I'm sorry, but know that you have made an impact on my life. My name is Mark Manganella. Um, in 2017, Becky and I, our life was fine. We were very happy. We both had very good jobs. We were in a property in Coatesville that we were developing. Um, everything seemed wonderful and then it changed. Becky got sick. She got caught in a cutback at work. She ended up in the hospital. I was told on several occasions by several doctors that it was very likely she was going to die and once definitively that she was going to die. And uh, 18 days later, she's leaving the hospital after hundreds of people literally were praying for her. Um, and after I surrendered to God and said, please do whatever you're going to do. First time in my life, I probably prayed boldly. Uh, maybe even a little bit uh, arrogantly, but uh, God provided and I apologized for my arrogance and especially in my humbleness of him returning Becky, not only to us and to me, but to healthy. Uh, she didn't need a liver transplant, which they told us she would. Um, she is now doing absolutely fine. Our lives are good again. We have scaled things down to be where they should be in life. And uh, we both serve in kids ministry and we are closer to God than ever. So I just wanted to let people know that in good times and in bad, pray, keep praying. Don't give up on prayer. Be persistent. Be shamelessly persistent and pray and ask and you will receive and pray in earnest. Uh, pray boldly, but keep praying. Um, he is wonderful. He is our Savior. Trust him. Love him. He loves us. Amen. So the question was, how has God shown up for you? I was watching a Facebook short, a, a reel, where a woman was reading her Bible and the verse uh, Leviticus 3.16 stood out and she said, all fat is the Lord's. And she made a joke about it and she said, she's got plenty, he can have it. And I laughed, um, but it got me thinking that contextually the fat was indicative of the, the abundance of the provision that God had for the ancient Israelites and that was to be reflected in their sacrificial practice and um, while we don't do that anymore we can still take the abundance the provision the fat that uh, God gives us in our lives and provide that to others and we found that he has shown up for us whenever my husband and I we love um, being a safe place in a sanctuary and opening our home to be a place of healing and hope uh, to those who may need it. And we found that as we've helped people through the years with the uh, resources, whatever they may be, whether they be physical resources or not, um, we have found that not only are we able to be the hands and feet of Christ and share that abundance with them, but it also comes back to us too, because everybody, us, them, we all have a story and we all have a way to connect and share and provide hope and healing that uh, we may not know we need, but God knows. And he, when we use our resources to glorify him and honor him and show the love of Christ to people, we are surprised in the ways that he does it right back to us. And it's always amazing to see. So consistently, I find God in the presence of 
in the presence of those around me who also seek to glorify and honor him. And um, as we all grow together in Christ, whether we, whether we are just starting out in our journey or we're a little bit further along, we have, we have an abundance of love and that love can manifest in so many different ways. And I'm so grateful for the ability to provide that love and even to receive that love from others.
like a fire burning son of god you are the one you are the one we're living for sing 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 and make music with the Guys, may you may have a seat. Now, um, I, I need to let you know, I said, you know, be prepared for today to be different. Uh, I already wasn't prepared. You guys can go and have a seat because I totally skipped the very first thing we were supposed to do, which we're going to do now, which is, again, something a little different for us, but something I knew. I, I grew up doing this a little bit, and some, some of you who are from uh, maybe more liturgical uh, church backgrounds, if you have that in your, in your history, there's something called responsive reading of scripture and it's where one person says something typically from the from the front and then um afterwards someone the 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 congregation as a whole will read a few lines and it goes back and forth it's a way of engaging with the scripture in a way that is not just hearing but speaking as well so what we're going to do there we go is we're going to do a responsive reading of psalm 103. now i can't see in the back it's not coming through is it coming through for you guys okay good so you will see very clearly what your part is, okay? Your part will be bolded and will have an arrow. But I encourage you to, to say this along as a congregation when it's bold and there's an arrow. But reading in Psalm 103, here's what we read. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and with all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He's slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower over the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. 
Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Pray with me. Father, thank you for the truth that we just read in your word that your steadfast love lasts from everlasting to everlasting. Lord, may we bless you by what we do. We offer this time together as worship to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, just like we've, we've prayed, we've sung songs, um, we've done a, a reading together. There's lots of different ways that we worship. And one of the ways that we worship at, as our church is through something we call giving, through offering. It's a way of us sh- giving back to the Lord of, uh, uh, of, from our hearts, from our resources, showing that God is uh, worthy of our worship. So it's something we do each week. It's something you can do um, in a variety of ways. You can give at the uh, lockbox in the back of the, uh, the auditorium space. You can text your donation amount to 84321. You can go to our website or our app. Those will all be places where you can do it. And if you need help with any of that, myself or Maya, um, our office manager, or, or several other leaders can help you with that if you're interested in doing that. But what I'd like you to do right now is take a moment and pray with me as we bless this time of honoring God with our finances. Father, thank you for entrusting us with what is yours. God, may we use all of it in a way that that pleases you, that brings you glory. And God, may we be good stewards of of what you've given us to, to bless others and to further your work in your kingdom. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, and you may not be aware of this, but you know, one of the reasons that we do uh, on a Sunday morning, you know, include this giving time, even though we don't pass a bucket. You guys remember when we used to pass buckets and baskets and all that? Um, uh, COVID kind of shot that in the head, okay? So we kind of stopped at that point. But we still highlight this, this giving because as far back as we have recorded in our history of God's people, all the way back into the, into the Old Testament, uh, giving back to the Lord, offering to him was a central piece of worship, okay? Um, and uh, one of the things that we, we saw there is the temple worship, like literally what you did to, to go to worship, like what we, we, we come on Sunday to worship together, you would come and there, sure there'd be singing and stuff, but it was a public spectacle of what you were offering to God. Like it wasn't a, hey, we'll pass this along and you can discreetly drop a turtle dove in it. That's not what they did. It it was literally, hey, I am coming in front of the whole congregation and together with you, we are all worshiping through this. So that's one of the reasons we highlight giving because the biblical model is that giving is a act of worship. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over now to, well, we just did that. There we go. That was what was supposed to hop up when I was praying. This is what happens when, when, when I assume that I can have control. Apparently, Elliot, you shouldn't let me do this anymore in the future, okay? Um, but that was the beautiful g- g- uh, graphic that was up while I was talking and praying. But what we have been doing as a church family for several weeks is I have been making you endure something. I've been making you endure me preaching two messages on, this, on one Sunday, I've done that for three weeks. It was, uh, uh, you, you guys slugged through it. I appreciate it. This week, we're only doing one. But it is to wrap up what we're calling our challenge and our opportunity. We have been talking for several weeks because what we believe at Grace Church is that God's absolutes are absolutely good. So that if he says it, we're going to say it, we're going to preach it, we're going to teach it, we're going to uh, engage with it, whether or not we necessarily want to. And one of those things that the Bible does talk about a lot is finances. And we said, guys, we as a church family have to spend a little bit of time focusing on this because what we do is we, we do have a challenge right now. And the, the, the challenge is that we have a financial problem. Our giving has not been matching up with what we budgeted. And that means we can't do the things that we've set out to do, that we have to uh, just say no to different opportunities. We said that this is a family problem. This isn't just the problem of, you know, Harold, because he didn't write that, you know, $400,000 check again this year. You you are writing that later this year, right, Harold? No? No? no. Okay, see, we're really in trouble, guys. No, no, it's a family. It's not just on one person's shoulder. A couple people. This is, the family has to deal with it. Just like our family, when we went through a little bit of a financial crunch earlier this year, we sat our kids down and said, okay, we have to really cut corners. We have to do this together. This isn't just a mommy and daddy problem. This is a whole family problem. And we said, because it was a family problem, it required a family solution that we would work together towards resolving, not just enduring, but resolving. But if we were going to do it last week, we said we have to do it God's way. 
And I said, let me give you just a few quick seven principles of New Testament Christian giving. Well, how we're supposed to give from being uh, sacrificial to being generous, to being regular, to being faithful, all those kind of things. What we're going to do this week is, is wrap it up. We've been talking about the challenge, and the challenge, quite frankly, is that it's up to me to do something. So often we think it's somebody else's job. So often we think, well, yes, that's all true, but you don't know my story. You don't know about me. You don't, we so often will go, it's someone else who needs to step up. What I will say is, we as a church family, to make this a family solution, if Grace Church is home for you, it's up to you to do something. Now, it's not my job to tell you specifically what to do. I have no idea, the leaders have no idea here at the church what any one person or family gives. And we don't want to know. We, we put safeguards in place so that we won't ever know. So that's not the issue. So I don't know what you give. You don't know what I give. But when it comes down to it, we all need to ask this question. I, I love Harold had said it before. We need to ask ourselves the question, God, and so it's not really asking ourselves, we're asking God, but for ourselves, God, what do you want me to give? It's not so much, hey, you know, God, what do I have left over? What can I do with this? What do, what do you want me to give, God? So what do I need to do? If I need to do something, what do I need to do? <clears throat> I say what we do is to start with a couple of realizations. First of all, it starts by understanding and embracing. I want to put three things out there real quickly for us. First of all, and it starts by understanding and embracing that giving through Grace Church is part of being Grace Church. Those aren't really separate ideas. If you are going to be a part of Grace Church, then giving gums along with that. Those are not differentiated. And we do say that. We like to say we're giving through Grace Church. We are a nonprofit organization. We are not trying to build some grand empire. It is using what comes in to accomplish Jesus' mission in the world. So it is really a giving through the church. But even what we do, and like later today, we're going to go to our partnership discovery track. And one of the things we talk about is our partnership covenant that we ask all of our partners, our official members, to sign and agree to. And there's literally a number in there, number five of the things that are being asked to, to agree to. It's, it's, this, uh, it's, it's this statement. I will strive to properly manage the resources God has given me, including my time, body, talents, gifts, attitude, finances, and possessions. This includes regular giving through Grace Church that is sacrificial and cheerful. Now, we don't monitor that. We don't like go through your checkbook and make sure you're doing that. But what we say is if you're, if you're a partner, this is the expectation. And that's what being part of Grace Church includes saying, hey, I'm in it with you. We do this together. That's how it works. It's just part of worship through Grace Church. And that's what I want to say next is that giving through Grace Church is part of just my personal worship of Jesus. Part of if this is your church home, then giving through the ministry here, this is part of what you're supposed to be doing as worship. Giving is Expected. That's what God has asked of us. And in Matthew 6, we went over this before, where Jesus is giving the principle of, of what should you invest yourself in and what should you do with what you have. He says in cha chapter 6, verse 21, Jesus' words are, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where you invest your resources, all that is yours of stewardship that you have uh, stewardship over, that shows where your heart is. So if I'm saying, yeah, Given to, to God's church, to, to that's, that's not really so important. That actually says, that's a, that's, that's a point pointing to where our hearts are at. That's why it is so important. All throughout scripture, from Old Testament to New, highlighting what we do with our resources shows what our view of God and his uh, lordship, his reign, his rule, his authority in our life. All, what we do with our finances, what we do with our resources reflects that. So yes, giving through Grace Church is part of my worship. And often we're asked, well, do I have to give through the church? Can I just give? Well, here's the deal. If you look biblically, the giving that we find in scripture from Old Testament to New, the 66 books of our Bible that make up the, the, the Bible that we use, the giving you see there is almost exclusively given through the organization of God's people. Almost exclusively. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't ever, but that should be a primary, not a, well, if I get around to it. That's just not the model that we have in the Bible. That's not the model we have in, in church history. From, the, uh, from our Jewish roots back, uh, even through the church roots with uh, the advent of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. All of that points to the church. So yes, giving to others 
is important. And I would encourage that that be part of how you steward your resources. But it is also very central in, in Scripture that giving through the church is what is expected of somebody who's a Jesus follower. And then lastly, I'll suggest this, that giving through Grace Church should cost me something every time. If we are giving in such a way, if we're, if we're worshiping with our resources in such a way that it's like, oh yeah, I've got some spare change. Oh yeah, I can do that. That's no big problem. I want to suggest that that's not the biblical model. We see a picture of this in First Chronicles in the Old Testament with uh, King David. And uh, there, there, there's some stuff going on, and God calls David um, in order for God to intervene, to, to build an altar and to worship him. And he kind of comes to this place, this guy named Ornan, and he says, okay, hey, let me buy this field. I want to, I want to do this, this worship of God. I want to build an altar sacrifice. And he says, you know, this is what he says to him. Uh, or he says to Ornan, I want to buy it. And Ornan replies, no, or he says, no, I don't want you to. He says, no, I will give it to you. Just take it. So King David has the opportunity, oh, you'll give it to me for free? Cool. Here's what, how David responds, no, but I will buy it for full price. I will not take from the Lord what is yours, nor offer burnt offerings that cost me nothing. See, he was supposed to provide this burnt offering as a, um, as a picture of his dependence on God, as a representative of the Jewish people. And yet this person was offering to let it happen for free. And David recognized that when it comes to offerings, when it comes to what we, we offer up to God to show our hearts our devotion, if it costs us nothing, it counts for nothing. Because it, doesn't, it, it, it has no value to me. So yes, it should always cost. It should always be sacrificial. You know what? I'm going I'm to say it's going to be scary. I shared before that my wife and I have, have had some of these conversations. It's, it would be a lot less scary to use what we put into, into our tithes who are offering to pay off certain bills. That, that, that would be humanly less scary. But I tell you, it's nowhere near as fulfilling. It's, it does not develop the relationship with God that giving to him does. It builds dependence. It builds connection when we're willing to do this. So that's the challenge that we've been talking about now for four weeks. We're in a rough spot, and we've got to do something about it. But I promise you there was going to be an opportunity, right? Well, so what's the opportunity? Well, there's two things. First of all, you're probably not going to be surprised by. The first thing I want to challenge you with is to commit to increase or begin your regular giving. Or I see, at least seriously consider because I'm not saying that um, every single person in here by any stretch is not honoring the Lord with what they're giving. I'm not trying to say that. But so often what I found is when people start saying, well, I think I'm giving enough. Usually, usually from the perspective that I've been able to engage with, that means you're comfortable giving what you're giving and you don't want to be pushed or challenged or stretched. And what the, the Bible that we've looked at has said, you know, it's supposed to be sacrificial. It's supposed to cost you something. And so I would like you to seriously consider Upping it. Remember those steps we talked about? Because here's the thing I know. Of those who call Grace Church home, we have those 51 family units that can, that can give, either singles in their own household or families, couples. We have 51 of those. Nearly 50%, 47% give nothing or $10 a week. That's pretty low for half of who makes us up. So I know that there's space on that end, but even as you move up, we say, well, the challenge was take a step. Would you be willing to say, hey, right now we've been given 20 bucks a week. Would you be willing to consider 30 bucks? Because there is a massive amount. If everybody who's a giving unit right now goes up one step, one $10 step, that will bring in an additional $25,000 over what, we're, we, what we've brought in, okay? But the step for you might not be 10, the step for you might be 50. That's possible. I'm not, going to tell, I'm not going to tell you not to do that. I want you to listen to the Lord. Okay? But that is the thing. I want you to commit to either increase or begin, or at least to seriously, authentically consider that. Ask the Lord what he would have from you. Now, here's the second one. And it kind of goes along with this. So, so that's, that's talking about our giving ongoing, kind of our regular act of worship. But the way the Bible sets it up, especially in the Old Testament, you had your tithes, your, your regular offerings, and they had these things called free will offerings, things that went above and beyond that weren't legislated by law, but were asked of God's people to show devotion. And that's what we're asking. In addition to this, we're going to ask you to, to do something. 
over and above what I just asked, and I know that's a big ask, I know that there's sacrifice involved, I want you to give above and beyond your, your regular giving because there's been a match offered to our church family for $25,000. There's a family that said that they want to help Christ's mission through our church to such a way that they are willing to, on top of how they already support our church, offer this up to 25000 That offer, they said, you know, we, we asked the Lord, we said, we could, we could just give it to you. We could just give it to the church. So, but we don't think that's going to help us address the problem. They said, because a lot of what, the material we just went through was stuff I went through with them as they were talking with me and saying, hey, we want to help not provide a Band-Aid, but a cure. We want to help our church families find the joy of giving, the joy of giving it back and trusting the Lord with it. Because if you can do that, it unleashes the work of the Spirit in your life and in your community. They, so they said, what we'll do is we will offer, and it's going to be it's around for about 10 weeks here, Everything that you give above and beyond your regular, we're asking you to, to notate. There are, uh, uh, there are envelopes. They should be in your seat backs now. We can get you more. It says matching gift campaign. This is for that which is above and beyond your regular giving. This is going to help us reduce our deficit, the debt that we've incurred against our budget. What we're asking is for above and beyond that you use that envelope going live this afternoon. It might even be live now. Um, online, you can select matching gift um, uh, when you give online, either through the app or through the website, okay? We're asking you to step up into that. Yes, we're asking you to, to commit to that initial increase, right? To say, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm willing to step up my, my, my regular giving, but I see the opportunity here now that we can match that 25,000. There's somebody who's willing to match up to 25,000 will allow us to eradicate the deficit that we have. And that is an amazing thing. And this is a family that has asked for absolutely no accolades. They actually said, no one may know who we are. Don't tell anyone. So this is the only time I have told our elders, I'm not going to tell you something, okay? I said, this offer, and if we want to move forward, that was the condition, and they agreed. Because this is not about somebody getting accolades, pats on the back. Or say, oh, look how nice and generous you are. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, this is for the Lord. We want to help our church family because we love our church family. And this is the way that we think we can do that. So that is the encouragement. Now, you may have some questions. I'm sure you will. We're going to give you some updates as we move along, some, you know, so to follow up. And, and guys, if we could do that, if we could raise that additional 25, that would be amazing. But we're trusting you with something. Because do you know what happens anytime churches say, hey, if you can give above and beyond your regular giving, do you know what usually happens? Your regular giving does this. Okay, I remember doing this at uh, at my last church, and we specifically said that it was a it was for a uh, uh, an outreach to Africa through Encompass World Partners. They had a tragedy, and they were asking for additional funds. And so he said, "Hey, if you can give above and beyond, we'll we'll send this off to help with them because this isn't part of our budget." When you tracked our weekly giving, it was exactly the same. The amount that came in for the Africa project was what our regular giving was short that week. I'm asking you to not do that. Now, we can't track it. You can do whatever you want, right? But we're asking you to see the value of this, the value of doing it this way, of, of making this giving, regular giving part of my worship, but also this opportunity to give above and beyond to accomplish what Jesus would have us accomplish. Imagine how we can impact Ephrata for Jesus, meeting needs and pointing them to the hope of eternity. If we had that extra, if we match it, $50,000 in our budget. That would be amazing, amazing, okay? That's a challenge, but if you have questions, please come talk to me, you can talk to Harold, you can talk to Bud, those are our two other elders. We'd be happy to discuss with you if you have questions and want to know more, but that is the challenge. We said we've had a challenge, but we also had the opportunity. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask our music team, they're going to come back up here. Isn't that amazing? I kept it under 50 minutes, right? No, I didn't want to make that too long. I wanted to, again, highlight the need that this is an important part of worship, and we're asking you to do it. We, we're, we're asking you to do it because it is a celebration of what God has done in our lives and through our church family. That's why we're doing it. We're not doing it because we're just a great civil, civil organization. But we believe that Jesus is the hope of today and the hope of eternity for us and for the entirety of the human race. We want to do everything we can to celebrate God and take that out. We thought this was a great way of kicking off this opportunity. We'll have 10 weeks to do it. And we'll keep, we'll keep you updated. But what we're going to do is now we're going to continue singing. So what I will do 
is I'm gonna ask you to, to stand with us. We're gonna a couple more songs, and we're gonna have another kind of creative element for what we're doing, but stand with us and join in singing these next two songs. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our veins. Souls, Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church, we need your power in us. Seek your kingdom. To see the captives' hearts release, the hurt, the sick, the poor in peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church. We pray revive. your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the can stop your beauty changing hearts you've made us for much more than this awake the kingdom seed in us fill us with the strength and love of Christ we are your church we are the home on earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here, we pray. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire, win this nation back, change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here, we pray. For my 
Everyone, you may have a seat. Now, some of you may be wondering why I armed all of you before you came in, right? We are not going that biblical to say we're having a good old-fashioned stoning, okay? We're not doing that. I know. But one of the things that we find in scriptures at um, significant periods of time, God's people would be asked to do something to symbolize something that was going on. Uh, to symbolize what God had done, what God was going to do, um, to, to show a physical outward symbol of a trust in him. We're going to get to one of those shortly. Like I said before, one of my favorites where we do a baptism in just a little bit of time. And it's a special baptism for me because I get to dunk one of my own kids. That's, uh, you know, you hold them under a little extra long when they're your own, okay? No, I promised them I wouldn't do that. No, but one of the things we find is in the, um, in the Old Testament, they would do something where they would build altars. They would build altars out of stone. And these altars weren't, uh, we think altar like, oh, place to kill something. That wasn't always the case, okay? These altars were kind of monuments, memorials. And what we're going to ask you to do is you were given a stone. We are going to ask you to participate, even if this isn't, isn't your normal thing. I'm going to ask you to participate. What we want you to do is write something. It can be just a single word on this stone. We have markers up here, paint markers that will let you do it. Something that says something that you are grateful to God for. Something you want to celebrate about God. Something maybe that has happened in the past that you want to celebrate, or maybe it's something that you are praying for now, but you're trusting him for it. Whatever that is, we're asking you to all come up and take it. There's, there's a number of pens up here so you can do it. And when you're done, just leave it on the table. We're going to be building our own little own little uh, altar of remembrance. And when we're all done, we're going we're gonna to write down the things you guys wrote, kind of create a, a list of that. But we're going to then turn it into a little bit of a memorial, something that we can look at, that we can remember what we believe in God, what we celebrate God for, what we trust in God for. Okay? So um, we're going to start playing a, a video. 
And it's just going to roll. There's not going to be words. There's not going to be instruction. And if only two of you do it, it's going to be really depressing. Okay? So, so please, uh, be, be willing to maybe step out of your, your, your normal and come up here and write down that one thing. You can write more than one, but write, write at least one thing on your rock that you're grateful for. All right, let's go ahead and play that video. Holy, 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 holy,
in the morning when I rise in the morning when I rise give me Jesus give me Jesus give me Jesus you can have all this world just give me Jesus when I am alone when I am alone oh when I am alone give me Jesus give me Jesus Give me Jesus, you can have all this world, just give me Jesus. When I come to die. When I come to die, oh, when I come to die, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. You can have all this world, just give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world just give me Jesus you can have all this world just give me Jesus all right if you're standing feel free to have a seat um, in just a moment you might want to stand from where you're at because we are doing a baptism now okay and um, i think it's important to first let you know kind of what we believe about baptism as a church first of all nobody's getting saved today that's not what's happening what's happening is we have two individuals we have miss christine and we have mr jonah who have both um, let us know that they made a decision to follow Jesus, and that they wanted to celebrate that, to display that through this, um, what we, we call an ordinance of baptism, this opportunity to symbolize what Jesus has done. And what we believe, um, and uh, typically we would, we would read through some scripture, but we're already going long, so we're going to, those handouts you got, please read through those scriptures. That gives you some of the, the, um, the, the background for, for why we do what it is that we do when it comes to baptism. We also have a discovery track. We had it last week. It's when we have every fourth Sunday of the month where we explain some of the, some of the uh, reasons behind our baptism. But he, first of all, it's central to making disciples. We find that in Matthew 28, that's listed there. It shows a trust in Jesus. It identifies as well with this as a church family saying, this is home. These are my people. Um, it, um, are you trying to cool it down? Is it too warm? Oh, okay. Well, just, just hold on a second. Um, it does also represent the biblical pictures we have of burial and new life. You're dying to sin and you're being raised to new life. All right? So that's what's happening. It's this symbol of what Jesus has already done. So in light of that, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, uh, have my, my son here get in first. Are you ready? What, what, yeah, no cannonballs. Okay? No, no, no. All right, now get down on your hands and knees. Or not your hands and knees, just your knees. Just your knees. Hands and knees, you'll drown. We don't want you to do that. All right. Oh my goodness, you're on the screen. Look, you guys are awesome. Thank you for figuring that out. Go ahead, down on your knees. Camera. Down on your knees. Okay, here we go. I'm going to ask you a few questions, son. All right, and these are questions we've already talked about. Are you ready? So um, it's going to be hard to hear, but will this mic pick them up, do you think? Okay, we'll try it. First of all, yep, yeah, look, look at me. Has there been a time that you've recognized that you've missed God's standard for your life and accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness and eternal life? Yes. Good answer. Is it your sincere desire, your real desire to live a Jesus-centered life from today on forward? Mm. If you didn't hear that, that, not, that rattling up and down of the skull was a yes. <laughs> Is your baptism today your way of publicly declaring your faith in Jesus and symbolizing the new life you have received in Jesus? Yes. Yes, okay. And then lastly, is there anything else you wanted to share with, with our church family? No. No, okay. He said he wasn't sure if he wanted to share anything. I will say this as his dad. Um, it was just this past Easter he gave his heart to Jesus, and he sat by himself quietly at the table for a little bit. Here, sit up, buddy, on your knees. And he said um, uh, he just had been thinking about it, and he had just asked Jesus to let him be part of his forever family. So... Uh, we did that, and we've been talking about this, and it's something he wanted to do. So, all right, Jonah, up on your knees. He's trying to swim around right now. This typically happens. Stratton started it as our shark last time. Come towards Daddy. Come towards Daddy. Okay. Here. Now go ahead and hold my arm. Okay? I baptize you on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Yeah. All right, Jonah, 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 stand up, buddy. Stand up, put your arm around Daddy. Put your arm around Daddy. There we go. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much for Jonah. Thank you for his heart, and thank you for, for having him be part of your family. Thanks for the decision he made. Help him to live a life that makes you proud. Help him to grow into a man that loves you and loves others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, can we give him another hoot and holler? Yeah. Oh. All right, there we go. All right, now that was, I think, one of the first times I actually had somebody throw themselves forward. I didn't have to do much uh, forward momentum there. All right, Miss Christine, are you ready for this? Yeah. All right, yes, I would recommend taking the glasses off. All right, I'll hold your hand here. There we go. Step over. There we go. Don't worry, I understand. I am completely blind without my contacts as well. Whoop. Oh. I can't see. All right. Oh, is there one more? I've also not had to uh, de -knee, uh, knee brace anybody. This is a whole new first for me at uh, baptisms. All right. So Christine um, started attending our church and our, the life group at our house not all that long ago. And her journey has been one that's been pretty interesting. But she recently came to a place where she um, wanted to reaffirm her faith. And we spent a couple of hours sitting down talking about the work Jesus has done in her heart and her life. And it's, it's really quite amazing. If you don't know Christine, please get to know her and hear some of her story. It's really neat. But based on the conversations we had, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, all right? Okay. Like I asked my son, is there a time that you've recognized that you've missed God's standard for life and have accepted Jesus' free gift of forgiveness and eternal life? Absolutely. Is it your sincere desire to live a Jesus-centered life from this day forward? Yes. Is, it, is your baptism today your way of publicly declaring that faith in Jesus and symbolizing the new life you've received in Jesus? Yes. And lastly... And I know from our conversations, that could be dangerous because we're already running late. But is there anything else you would like to share? Um, no. <laughs> I don't think I've ever given her the opportunity to speak in one of our engagements before where she hasn't taken it. The water must be very cold. It's a little cold. All right, here we go. And again, you're going to hold my arm and I'll hold your nose. There we go. All right. Based upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father. 
in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. That's right here. You're standing up with me? All right. All right. Let me, let me pray with you. Father, I thank you for Christine. I thank you for the, the joy of your salvation that you have renewed in her heart and in her life. God, may you draw her ever closer to you. And God, may you use her in mighty, mighty ways to be a blessing in the lives of others, but to be a, um, a person who points to you and points out your glory and your, your grace and your goodness, your greatness. Thank you for the work you've already done in your life. May you continue to use her in mighty ways. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, one more hoot and holler, everybody. All right, now while I help Christine out because she's blind, um, we're going to sing one more song yet this morning. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to that. God's celestial shore, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, when I die, hallelujah, by him, by Well, let me just say again, thank you, church, for joining us in our celebration. We know we were a little bit longer today, but we do serve a good God and a God who is worthy to be celebrated. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, thank you for uh, joining with us and celebrating with Christine and with Jonah, especially on this uh, special day of their baptism. Again, make sure you say hi to them. Meet them if you don't really know them. One of them's coming to attack. Okay, there we go. That was, that'd be mine. All right. Love you, buddy. I um, want to remind you of a couple things, but before we do that, let me take just a moment and pray with you all one last time. Father, thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for the day to celebrate you, celebrate what you're doing in your family, and to celebrate joy of salvation, uh, specifically with Christine and with Jonah today. May you, um, may you move us to be people who worship every moment of every day. Thanks again for the day before us. May we use it to your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Now, lastly, just to remind you today, we do have our discovery track in just a few minutes. That's our partnership discovery track. We can find out more about what becoming a official member, official partner of our church is all about. And on August 18th, that is a Friday night at 6.30, we are having our magical back to school blast. And we are bash, not blast, bash. Um, and we encourage you to come. And if you uh, want to find out more, I believe Miss Maya and Miss Diana are helping to organize that. But let us know if you have questions. With that said, you are released. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>